couple months ago, I reviewed a Ert T-style guitar and that video seemed to go over very well. So a lot of you said in the comments, why don't you check out some of the other ones? And there was one that I was particularly interested in, so I have that one. And there was one that you guys were particularly interested in, and it was this one. And that's why in today's deep dive, we're gonna be checking out the Ert EGLP610 single cut guitar. It's made in China. Now looking at the front of the headstock, one of the first features we're gonna see is the truss rod cover has a door. You don't have to unscrew it to get to the truss rod. This is something you see on Ibanez guitars a lot. So it's a really cool feature. Then we have a bone nut with a rosewood fretboard and 22 stainless steel medium frets that are highly polished and we'll get to that in the geeky stuff. Now, looking at the body, we have roasted akume, which is a, like a mahogany. It's a little lighter in weight. And this does have a satin polyurethane finish on the guitar, on the neck and the body. So it looks natural, but it is finished in polyurethane. One thing that I have to tell you that I didn't tell you is that the guitar is very thin. This is the same thickness as about the LTD guitars, or if you've seen the Gibson Les Paul lights, uh, they're about this thick, but there's more carving on the top of this. This really looks really nice. It has a tunematic style bridge with two humbuckers and a three-way blade switch, which is a unique choice and a volume and tone. And they're using what looks like custom aluminum knobs. This is also a good time to mention the body is not chambered or weight relieved. Now getting back to the neck, it is 24 and three quarters scale and it is a roasted akume just like the body. It is a set neck and it has die cast 18 to one gear ratio, non-locking tuners. All right, let's do the geeky stuff. Let's start with taking a look at the relief on the neck and you can see the neck has no relief and it's very, very straight. Looking at the action, it's also very low. It's at one and a half millimeters or 0 0.05, which is considered a low action and very desirable to players who like a light touch or don't want to push the string down very hard. Now looking at the nut, it looks pretty good. The slots look like they're right and we're gonna check to see if they were cut deep enough. To test that, I made these tools out of fret wire and I'm using the exact same fret wire that's on the guitar and what I wanted to do is act like a zero fret where the string lays right on it. And as you can see, it's not laying right on it, but it is touching the fret, so it's pretty close. Let's go ahead and check the frets. <laughs> back to that first note listen to this and it's not a dead fret there's not an issue there yet but we do see what happens when the action's super low it's just going to get a little bit of sizzle a little kissing of the frets there Hard to get up there. All right, so no dead spots whatsoever, but a little bit of sizzle, just a little bit. And uh, to be honest, if I was interested in having the action this low, that would be not enough to bother me. I would actually be okay with it. But if you don't like any kind of uh, you know kind of buzz at all, you would definitely want to raise the action just a little bit. Uh, and I don't think it's gonna take much, but just a little bit. Now that we check that there's no high frets and that they're polished, let's go ahead and check the fret ends with the sock test. Feels pretty good, but believe it or not, look, it made a mark. It's just one little mark, but this is definitely great though. This is a four and a half out of five for sure. Let's check the bass side. Now on the bass side, we're gonna go ahead and check it. And interesting, this is flawless. This is a five out of five. I can already tell, let's see. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be a five out of five. So overall, a five out of five and a four and a half out of five, these are great frets. Now we have to definitely talk about these frets because they are highly polished. I wanna show you how they do this because it is very work intensive. What they do is they basically round off the edges of the fret, especially the stainless steel fret, before it even goes on the fretboard. Then they go ahead and remove a section of the blade underneath so they can drop it right into the fretboard and have a perfect fret end, as you can see right here. Now we talked about this guitar being a solid body and it is, but what I did is I made a line so you could see the two pieces that they glued together. There's two pieces here. And you can also see the line I made to show you where they glued on the heel. However, I cannot find where the scarf joint line is. So I don't know if this neck is one piece or if it was glued together with two to three other pieces. That's a benefit of roasting the neck. It makes it when you glue it up and it looks like one piece. Let's take a look at the electronics, but before we do, I just wanna mention that the back plate is flush with the body, and also there is a metal plate for the output jack, which is nice to see at a price point like this. Now looking inside, we see a couple things. We see two 500K potentiometers. There is a 0.22 microfarad capacitor here on the tone control. Everything looks like it was neatly done and zip tied up, which is nice. And of course, there is a three-way 
PC board based switch, which is again, okay. Something else to note, there's no shielding paint in here or shielding tape, but what's interesting is there is a wire that is screwed to the body as if it was grounding to shielding. So it makes me wonder if they specified to the manufacturer they wanted this sh uh, cavity shielded and the manufacturer didn't do it, but followed the rest of the wiring schematic. It could be, could be. There's a ton of reasons why they could do this. I'd be curious to know if it was supposed to have shielding paint or shielding uh, tape in there. Looking at the cavities of the humbuck, there's also no shielding paint. Looking at the humbucker, we have a couple things that are interesting. Patent applied for, so PAF is what they're kind of going after. It says 57 plus classic, which is probably what they're emulating here. And it is wax potted and the quality of it looks really good for a pickup and a guitar price this low. So checking the bridge pickup, we have the resistance at 8.6K and the inductance at 4.1, which is definitely in line with what Gibson is saying. Their 57 Classic Plus pickup is spec'd at. Now looking at the neck, we're seeing the same kind of thing. We're seeing 8.2 on the resistance and 4.0 on inductance. And remember, these pickups are also using an Elneco 2 magnet, just like the Gibson 57 Classic Plus pickups. And so it'll be interesting how close they get in sound because the guitar is only $9 more than a set of Gibson pickups. Let's take some measurements. The nut is 42.3 millimeters or 1.6 and the 12th fret is 52.5 millimeters or two inches. Now the thickness of the neck at the first fret is 22.56 millimeters or 0.8 and the thickness of the neck at the 12th fret is 22.8 millimeters or 0.9 which makes the neck great. It's not too chunky and it's definitely not small. It kind of fits in the right spot. Now they say it starts as a C and goes to a U and I confirm that using these templates. It's definitely got the fender C shape kind of thing happening around the first to the seventh fret. And then after that, it kind of goes more like the 60s U shape and it feels fantastic. It's very subtle. I don't think you'd notice it if they didn't tell you. Now the fretboard has a compound radius and it's nine and a half to 14 is what they spec'd it. But when I checked, it seemed closer to 10 to 16. Definitely the 16 was firm. The 10 could be close to nine and a half. I just want to let you know. I just found it to be a little bit different than what they said. The handshake, we didn't talk about that. Uh, handshake is when I hold the guitar where the neck and the body meets to see how comfortable it is to hold and see uh, if there's anything kind of, you know, poking your hand or anything. And this is a very common set neck joint. It's not very good, you know, for that. Um, it's no different than anything else you'd play there. In fact, that's also why I have access issues getting to the higher frets on the low strings right here. So be aware of that if that's something that concerns you. Now, I figured with the guitar being roasted akume body and neck, it would be light, and it was. It was basically just right at seven pounds. So let's talk about how much this guitar costs, and it sells for $359.98 as of filming this video on Amazon. Now, looking at them used, I only found one that ever sold and it sold for $375. And it's most likely it sold when they were out of stock on the new ones, but who knows? But I don't see any others for sale. Now, if you're looking for suggestions on guitars that are comparable in the market, you have Harley Benton. They're gonna sell for about $100 or a little bit more than that less. It won't have stainless steel frets, but it'll be about the same quality. ESP LTD will have one at about double the price and still won't have stainless steel frets, but it will have better brand power with being an LTD. And of course, there's Epiphone, not even $100 more and has some pretty strong brand power. All of these guitars I've played and I thought they were all comparable to each other. So let's do some sound samples. First, we're gonna start off with my 65 Deluxe Reverb. It's got an SM57 mic'd up to it, and it's got a stock Jensen speaker. And we're just gonna play the guitar and see how it sounds with the amp, especially since I'm curious about these pickups. Let's start with the neck pickup. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it sounds good. I wouldn't detect anything wrong with this pickup. It's really interesting how good this pickup sounds when the last Hurt Guitars pickup was not very good. That's nice. go to the bridge pickup see how that sounds and it's definitely got more brights obviously a lot of mids a 
little bit more punch too. It definitely, these definitely remind me of the Gibson pickups. One thing I love about Gibson pickups is they punch really hard. They always have a fast attack through the amp. I love that. Let's go to the middle. So let's go to my go-to amp. This is my Bad Cat Cub 40, and it's running through a 112 cabinet with a Vintage 30, mic'd up also with an SM57. pick up. Go to the middle. Oh, that's a nice little throaty. Let's see how the pickups sound with some high gain, and we're gonna switch over to the uh, Ingle Fireball 25. We're running through the same 112 cabinet with a Vintage 30, mic'd up with an SF57. So what are the pros and cons? Well, the pros are definitely the fretwork is fantastic. You just don't see fretwork like this at this price point. Speaking of price points, the price point was also a pro. $359.98, it's great, but what's even better is you can buy it on Amazon and get great returns and service. That's something to mention right now. This guitar was sent to me by Amazon, not by Earth Guitars. So no one had their hands on this besides the shipper before shipping it to me. Other pros I'd like to mention is the weight. And what's nice is like I said, it's roasted body and neck. So it's not likely you're gonna get a heavy one. And I gotta say the neck carve was very comfortable too. And of course, we gotta mention the pickups. I'm really surprised how good they are. The last ERT we reviewed, the pickup, the neck pickup was not very good. The bridge pickup was okay. So I wasn't expecting a whole lot in this guitar, considering this guitar is basically the same price. These pickups were much better. And I could honestly say, I don't see anything that you need to upgrade on the guitar if you buy it. So those are all definitely the pros. Now I have to say the cons are very hard in this guitar because it is a lot of features for the price, but I'm not a big fan of the inlays. I will say the real thing I wanna focus on is the actual body and the way it looks. This guitar conveys a message that looks like it's made to be very affordable, but considering the fact that it has all these really nice features, it seems like they would really, really do well. If they kind of made the guitar look a little bit more expensive, it would really hold its own with some guitars at two and three times the price. And it seems like for the cons, if you're paying attention, it's mostly just aesthetics, the performance the guitar speaks for itself. Well, on that note, I'm gonna let you go. As always, I wanna thank you so much for your time today. Till the next time, know your gear. Now, just remember, the builders who send these guitars for my review have a drive to make great guitars. They agree to send non-cherry-picked instruments and let me try to find the best and the worst points of their guitar. Nothing I say or show is meant to take away from their hard work, dedication, and I applaud their ability to check their egos at the door and share their workmanship with us. Let's face it, most companies are not willing to do this.